Hello, welcome to Tarot and Oracle for the Soul. We are doing another flip through and first impressions of Lisa Lister's Self Sorcery Oracle. This, I think, was in my, I don't know if this was in the first box or my FOMO box. I can't remember. I do apologize if I have indigo dye in my fingernails. I have been doing Shibori indigo dyeing and I try to wear gloves. But when I was rinsing out the shibori from the dye, I did not have gloves on. I always forget. Sometimes I just like plunge my hands in the vat. It's non-toxic. It just smells really bad and dyes your hands. But I think my hands look okay. They're not too bad. But I haven't been putting nail polish or fake nails in because I am doing the dyeing. And I don't want <laughs> like discolored press on nails or anything. I'm working on getting my Christmas presents going. So that's what people are getting from me for Christmas from me this year is a scarf, handmade silk. Well, I didn't make the silk scarf. I purchased it on Debbie Maddie's website with some supplies and then I'm doing the patterns and the dyeing. I've been having friends come over and it's been a lot of fun. I like doing art projects with other people, especially when it comes to things like dyeing or making jewelry. That's another thing I just got into, <laughs> making bracelets. All right. So it says a 42 card deck and guidebook. Remember your magic. This oracle has been channeled and drawn with love by creatrix Lisa Lister to help you connect to your creative life force as source, access your unique to you magic, and remember that you have the power to feel and co-create your own well-being. Lisa Lister is the best-selling author of Witch and Self Sorcery, which, <laughs> which, which, I've had Witch Forever and I haven't read it yet. I need to read it. And I just got the book Self Sorcery. So I'm looking forward to reading both of those books. She's an artist, oracle, ritual, and ceremony guide S, well woman therapist, and a movement and practice facilitator. There's her website. And then we have it retails for $24.99. I did not pay full price. The box is a nice little compact box. I like it. It's not too big. Remember your magic. Remember your, you are magic. Your magic. <laughs> All righty. A little play on words there. So we have the little quote and then just pink on the inside. Just simple matte black cards. I don't know if that's dust or if it's part of the cards. I can't tell. I guess it's part of the cards because it's on every. So they're matte. All right. Ah, uh, they're like cardboard. They're a little thick. You don't like the cardboard. You are the mother loving spell. This oracle will support you to self source, to take fierce responsibility for yourself, access your creativity, and reconnect to the frequency that is uniquely yours. It invites you to come to your senses, untangle yourself from the societal spell to reveal what's real for you. Trust your instincts, self-attune to your innate body wisdom to cultivate your own magnetic source power. Remember your magic, become the mistress of your mysteries, know your flow and live your rhythm allow these cards to return you to your true nature all that is cyclical rhythmical primal instinctual and magnetic says lisa lister is a best-selling author artist oracle and well woman therapist she offers practical psychological and spiritual support to women who are exploring their relationship with their body their cycles their sexuality and their power again there's her website So these are other books by her, Oracle Decks, Meditations, Words and Artwork were by Lisa Lister. Okay, so copyright is 2024. Created in deep devotion to she, she the creative and primordial power source that resides in each of us and which when cultivated, tended and aligned 
with is activated and potent magic and medicine for ourselves, each other, and the entire bloody planet. A love note, self-sorcery explained about the self-sorcery oracle, reading the cards, self-sorcery card spreads, more ways to work with this oracle, and then each card. Trust your instincts, remember your magic, and Spyro for the cards and about the creatrix. All right, so let's look at, all right, so one of the cards is called Seeing in the Dark. So you have Transmission, Affirm It, Self-Sorcery. All right, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so there's more info in the back. So this is a really pretty good book. Just with the, the book alone, with the info, it's 152 pages. And then with about the Creatrix, it's 153. So not bad cute little book and the cards are not huge I love it they're perfect I bought this deck because I was obsessed with the colors the vibrancy I love how colorful and just really beautiful these cards are. And I mean, look at that bee on her forehead. Don't tame your fire. That's right, ladies. Then it's not the time to contain your fire right now or put it out, I should say. <laughs> She's saying contain it, don't put it out. Anyway, cultivate courage. That kind of looks like Medusa right there. Know that you know. I hear her calling. Lean back. Let your body remember. Perpetually becoming. Reveal yourself. I love the butterflies and the flower. It's just so gorgeous. Seeing in the dark. Okay, this is a little scary. <laughs> I like this hippie chick. I like the owl and the daisies. That's cool. I'm loving the representation and the diversity and the models don't all look the same. And some of the cards are really in your face and I love it. This card is gorgeous. I love this one too. I love her hair and the spirals and her dancing. And I just love that one. Speak your truth. Stay with it. You know, the flower of life, the whole mother loving spectrum. You are the spell. Another bee. I love it. I love that card too. I love the background, the, the greenish teal and the golden. So pretty. I like all the spirals too. I'm really digging all the spirals. I 
I know I've read that some people found her first book, which problematic. And she kind of addresses that. I was reading some stuff and she's addressed it and apologized. And she didn't mean for it to come across the way that it came across in Witch. So I'm going to have to read Witch first and then Sell Sorcery and see if she became more inclusive in her language. If she really did fix the problem. So I'll let y'all know. I love this one with all the gemstones in the background and... The snake with the hearts and her rings. It's so cool. Oh, wow. Look at this one. Beautiful. So they, even though they're a little on the thicker side, they're not too thick. And luckily they don't stick together. When I was using the, one of the decks, oh gosh, which one was it? I just did a reading on my Instagram on Smart with it. The like dream your future or whatever, that one. The one I said we needed right now. That one was a little sticky. It was a little difficult to shuffle. But this is shuffling like butter, like a dream. I love it. Right. Let's see what message we get today from these cards. <laughs> Contain, don't tame your fire. All righty. Since I was talking about that one, that's the one that wants to be heard. This is a new chapter and it says, come to your senses, untangling yourself from the societal spell to reveal what's real. All right. Page 49 in the book, contain, don't tame your fire. Transmission. Yes, you know you can create fire. Yes, you know you can burn shit to the ground. Yes, you know that your anger and rage are sacred and holy. And you also know deep down in your belly and bones that you have the capacity to contain it. But here's the thing is I feel like women have been containing anger. And I say let the motherfucker burn. Like let's fucking burn it all down with our rage. So I don't know. Let's see where she's going with this, okay? All right. You know that if you're able to hold your fire, really hold that fire in your body, your body becomes a magical container, a vessel that magnetizes and amplifies, that bends and shapes that fire into a potent creative force that can then be channeled with intention, focus, and clarity into what really matters. I get that, but I feel like shit needs to be burned down to the ground. <laughs> Affirm it. I don't tame my fire. I contain it. I potentize it and use it with clear intention. I think that is important to channel your rage and your anger into creative forces. But my favorite way to channel my rage and my anger is through kickboxing, through running, through breaking shit. Like I think those like you break it rooms are really great where you can just go in and smash shit. I think it's really important to not contain the rage and the anger. I think women do that and suppress it. And I know she's saying like, let it out, but I don't think it's enough to let it out like, through poetry, which is okay, and through words and writing. I think it's important to do that. We need that, we need that inspiration, but I feel like it needs to move through the body, either through shaking, dancing, yoga, coming together with a group of women and just screaming, taking action, standing in your power, standing up for yourself, watching out for young girls and women in your space, making sure they're safe, Taking no shit. I really feel like that's important. All right, so now we have cell sorcery. Look, there are definitely times when your Kali Ma, goddess of death, time, destruction, and rebirth rage is necessary. When the tower card in the tarot is pulled and you burn it all to the ground. And there are also times, and since you've pulled this card, this is one of those times when what's required is for you to hold a fire and ask yourself, 
What is currently creating reactivity in me? Where am I feeling it in my body? Now take a breath. Hold it for a count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Release it slowly. And audibly, which I did. And ask that place and space in your body if it can hold it. If you can let what you're currently experiencing be present in your body without doing anything with it. You become a sacred container for the fire. A container that prioritizes its power and force so that you get to choose its direction with intention. Eh, I feel like the time of doing that, I guess it's never going to be over because we always need women speaking up and creating art whether or not they receive recognition for it praise for it whatever it is important to have our stories out there i think instagram and things like tiktok where people talk about their rage or the unfair treatment and being open is really really important a lot of things have come to light like i was talking to my friend who we graduated high school together over 20 years ago and you know I went to college I ended up majoring in women's studies and I was telling her that we learned the history or I should say excuse me the history of women which was amazing but we really felt like the boomers and all the women before us had already taken care of every issue and we really were taught to feel like the boomers it was done like there was nothing else to do like women had it all and we were told like they were really transparent that you're not going to get a job being a women's studies major like you're going to struggle a lot of women's studies majors become strippers and it's like wow what is this like I don't know if it's like gatekeeping and I guess you know like every generation does it but I look at the next generation and I'm excited like for them for what they're doing and how they're making changes and how they're speaking out and bringing things to life especially in the medical community how women weren't even started being studied until 1994 and just how barbaric we still treat women especially in the gynecological field and that that's not okay and to like advocate for yourself now what was really being pushed politically on us at the time in the early 2000s at the university I went to was having home births and that we shouldn't have medicalization of delivery. And it's interesting, I just read some books about women in medicine and especially gynecology and how, you know, we were shown that like twilight birth was so abusive and all of these things. Yet when I read this book, it was flouted as it was a blessing to women and it helped a lot of women go through the literal terror of childbirth. I mean, when you are giving birth spiritually, you are literally leaving your body. You are literally a portal for this new soul to come in and you leave your body and there's very serious spiritual implications and there's very real trauma and unfortunately even with the medicalization of giving birth you can't eradicate that trauma and so I see both sides you know I think that it's romantic it's a romantic notion to have midwives and have a birth at home but oof, what if something happens not every birth can be done at home what if your baby's breached what if you hemorrhage like my sister with her second child she had scar tissue in her uterus and when the placenta detached she almost hemorrhaged to death and if she had not been in the hospital she would have died and i remember walking in her hospital room after she gave birth to her daughter and instead of it smelling like life and her being happy, she looked like death and it smelled like death in there. And it was really terrifying. It was really scary. And I think once you see death in or even just glimpse at it, like my sister, you realize how important it is to have medicalization of birth. Do I think there's still a long way to go in gynecology? Yes. And OBGYNs? Yes. I think that the history of it is very barbaric and the way that it was studied and practiced has been horrific. The chainsaw 
was created to cut through the pubic bone to get babies out like through c-section it's it's horrific um the fact that they use chainsaws on women is is terrifying so you know learning those histories and thinking like in the early 2000s oh well women like we're so advanced we have the right to vote we have bodily autonomy but 20 years later like seeing all of that being taken away and there's still gaslighting in the medical community and just everything that's broken that's why i'm not sure if now is the time to contain maybe we've contained it too much our rage I know that now, you know, women speaking out and telling their stories, their birth stories and, and say, you know, saying that birth and pregnancy isn't romantic. I think telling people's stories is really important. Freedom of speech is really important. Women getting to communicate with each other is really important. Learning the history of women, powerful women is really important. And I think that having women's spaces is really important. So that's why I'm so excited about this deck and working with it. But I don't know if I agree with that card. I think the time for containing might be over. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below and just share whatever you want to about your experiences as being a woman or in women's spaces and how you all are feeling right now. All right, thanks for watching and till next time.